Part two, Vuk Kosik on AI and literature. He has this machine called Llama. He was like, stupid machine wants to give you what you like. And the guy who was interviewing him was like, oh, isn't that sweet that like AI wants to make me happy? Of course he was saying this with irony. So the artist said, it's just sales. Things like clicked in my brain. Yeah, that's what the algorithm is, right? It's trying to give us what we want so we stay on the platform. So in the same way, he's saying that AI is doing the same thing, but instead of giving us like images and pictures and video, it's just stringing together words that we find like beneficial. Like if you use chatbot GPT to get your essays done, or if you like for in his case, like tried to write a poem with certain restrictions. And he basically said the way it works is that, you know, like a word rose is placed. Based on this crowdfunding pool, what word usually comes after rose? And based on the highest statistical likeliness of that word that comes after rose, it would place it there because it assumes that that's what we as a population like. And that brings it to like another point that I thought was really interesting, as in like technology being an amplifier of social reception. It's terrible because it's nailing down the same prejudices. So because it's, it's crowdsourcing and it's about the majority, if you search the example they use is like if you search a doctor, likely you're gonna find like some white older guy in a coat compared to like an ethnic woman. Oh, another parallel that I found is that like, you know, even during like the conception of social media and the conception of AI, or at least like the early adoptions of AI, again, like that fear of, I need to adapt. We have to accept it. We have to accept it as quickly as possible. And I think it's also like kind of put people against people where it's like, if I don't learn how to use AI, this other person is gonna use like know how to use AI and it's gonna run me out of business or it's gonna make me obsolete. And I think it's like kind of similar with social media. It's like, oh, if I don't learn how to like have a presence, it's gonna be oversaturated and that person's gonna have X, Y, and Z benefits and it's gonna take it all away from me. And this other thing that they said was really interesting. It's like the basic needs, the basic human needs of architecture has not changed, but technology has changed how we serve this basic need. So as AI either being like a tool or a destroyer and the destroying part again, like any tool, it is humans that choose to use it against each other. AI needs a person to put input in. Social media needs a person to create content. It is us using these tools to phase each other out and it's not AI itself, at least not right now from my understanding. What was also really refreshing about this artist is that because he's been messing around with this for a really long time, Eki is something that he used to create art early on and it's something that, according to them, according to The Guardian, influenced the art in The Matrix. So this guy's been doing this a really long time. And what I really appreciated about this lecture is his ease with it, his kind of critique with it, his kind of rebellious nature with it. And it's something that I really found like as a, as a huge theme during the talks. And I'll, I'll talk about a really quick thing about self-publishing after. Hi, fingers crossed. I'm actually on the train and I'm just gonna add it here because I don't think I recorded this. The thing about marketing was that when they talked about self-publishing, it was very much how do we make series? How do we make people come back? How do we make the most money? What are royalties on having bosses and everything? And so towards the end, they were like, any questions? And this person's like, well, not a question. But I just wanted to say that like back then, self-publishing had to do with being radical, saying things that wouldn't be published. And you know, now it's just all about money. And I was like, dude, like I completely agree. Like one of the speakers wrote about like orc love, vampire love, or some, some fantasy love and not against different kinds of love. She writes like five books a year. Kudos, like, you know, I know Slavoj also writes really really fast it was just the way that she talked about ooh, I think really it was just the way she talked about like oh towards the end if i give them like an orc valentine and then they'll subscribe or something uh, that is something that i'm kind of over stuff as well of course i want to make money off writing but not at the expense of like oh i'm just driven about making as much content and making a series just because one person who believe like a person who believes in me would just buy all my books one of my friends that actually read both of my books said that he clearly likes the second one than compared to the first one and I think that's a compliment in terms of like they're all distinct but also I'm a new writer so it could be a naive thing to say but yeah. Oh and also because I'm extremely generous, um, hot tip, so if you're like me and you like miss
miss well you didn't miss the train the train got cancelled um if you want to like know which seats are free do you see how there, there's nothing here it's just blank it's black but then like if you look at like behind me there's like this green thing here that shows like when something is reserved by someone so if you need a seat and it's clear like that you know that you're good so that's a hot tip and the thing that I found really refreshing about this guy is that he is a person who uses it so much to the point that he isn't afraid of it. He's trying to find the errors and the gaps in how AI messes up. It's not so much like someone who rejects AI and then goes like, oh, it's just it's just a tool. It's like not us so and it replaces. But someone who messes around with it so much, like he can point out in a very precise way why it is that it is still like, extremely flawed and extremely lacking and again like you know reducing it back to its actual natural state which is a tool supposedly a tool for us human beings and then there was like two other things that he said that was like it was just like i'm like i went for slavoy but this guy is like pretty interesting oh yeah and that the thing about trying to find the gaps in ai is hallucination culture don't really know what that means yet because it was the first time I heard it. The idea, I think, is that it breaks through the hallucination of either like the the grandness of AI or the fear of AI of the hallucination. We talk a lot about this during my literature class actually about entertainment and entertainment is just taking pleasure out of mistaking an illusion for reality. Like think about that when you like go scroll through social media when you know it's fake and you know it's like selected and you know it's like presented in a certain light and you know all these things but you're still taking pleasure and you're still scrolling through so Plato already kind of well my tutor adapted it but it's really interesting how like we can find its roots in Plato other two things that I found really interesting is that he said burn the fucking manual unless you want to behave like a fucking engineer burn the fucking manual if not then you're just a testimonial and I thought that was really interesting Ugh, on so many tangents. I was just talking to a friend who showed me his book on Descartes, like the Meditations of Metaphysics, and it was empty. It was like a clean book. And we were like six weeks into our first semester. And I was just like, your book is like empty. I was like, don't you write notes? And he's just like, oh, no, I don't write notes. And he was like flip flopping between like, I'm going to give it to friends like after. But it kind of came down to the crux of him being like, he doesn't want to dirty the book. And I was like, but this is our job, though. Our job is to like rip apart. The <laughs> I actually said this. Our job is actually to rip apart these texts to critique it, because that's what philosophy is based on. Someone says something and you're like, no, this is like and critiquing is not like, you know, this is horrible and then like you know this is like all these things are wrong with it it's just kind of like no this is how like this is how i distinguish it not working and then you just you know start i just got an idea for my dissertation you you just like this is how it's not working and you built from it you take from like it's not just like that sucks cancel it throw it aside you see what doesn't work and then you build upon it and that's philosophy and you can't build upon philosophy if you have this like sacred perspective a sacred distance where it's like oh no i can't write and i'm like i get it if it's like some limited edition very expensive very old book where if you write on it like no because i i usually buy like secondhand books to save money but also like you know i like older books compared to like the new prints if it's an older book and when you write on it like the paper starts falling apart i get it if it's like a gf like I don't see why it's sacred because the text already exists the text is like already somewhere everyone recognizes the text but that is your book and i think the first step is to put your words next to these words and have your thoughts not okay not grandiose enough to say like on the same level but on the same page so yeah that's what this thing remind me of and if not then you're just going to be someone who like a testimonial is like it's like it's like you you just like been through the process and you're you're just someone who's witnessed it and you're not someone who like actually engaged with it so fuck it. like this guy's pretty dope i'm gonna go home and google him another thing that he said was just like there's something that's truly been lost through social media which is three things truth trust and democracy and I found that like really interesting because he's like, oh yeah, and these are the people we're going to trust to help like mediate our amount of consumption. 
but like this is coming from someone who like you know as i said like is really engaged in this world and it was just so refreshing to have someone not intimidated by this area but someone who like mocks it just because he's so familiar in the space yeah i think i think that's it i guess like just to end this video top tip if you come to germany if not frankfurt and this comes from like you know the the really cool guy from reception if they're not nice you don't have to be nice if they're loud be louder so yeah good luck everyone uh, i hope you've been well and thank you again to co2 for this thing that i will remember for a really long time uh, and also thank you for buying my book i'm excited uh, to hear what you say oh and i guess if you're if you made it to the end both my books actually got shortlisted to the uno press lab so both books made top 12 so I have a 2 in 12 chance of being published by a university press, which is super exciting. And I should technically find out either at the end of this week or early next week. So thank you for your patience. I have, if you've noticed, I've moved my videos from once a week to once every two weeks because I'm prioritizing school. But yeah, I hope you've been well and I'll see you on the next one. Bye. Oh, wait, no. Tschüss.